Penn State fans, Bob Flounders, Dave Jones, Blue White Breakdown. Dave, let's just get right into it. Where is where do you what are the possibilities for James Franklin and Penn State uh, as far as a bowl possibility? We were talking off air about it's a it's it's not particularly clear yet, but there are some games maybe this weekend and some things to kind of look for for the fans. I'm not ready for that yet. Okay. I want to know about East Lansing. Is it as beautiful as? Oh no, you didn't go there. You went to Detroit. Is it, is it just, just as beautiful just, as always? You just stayed in Detroit, and it Ew. was. A lot more pleasant. At the Detroit airport? Detroit airport. So when we flew, um, come, we flew Thanksgiving, and then, the, then on that Saturday, they were both they were ghost towns. It's, it's, I think it's Sunday is when it gets crazy. By the way, for travelers, that yeah. is a little-known fact that really helps you. If you can travel on a holiday, like on Do Thanksgiving, it. on Christmas, like you have your Christmas morning, and then you fly at like dinner time on Christmas. It's heaven. Do it. You get a Do better it. price. The the airports aren't crowded. I mean, really, Christmas Day is over at two thirty or three in the afternoon. Right. If you can book a flight for like six on Christmas Day, I mean, I have done it. I did it to the Rose Bowl. Uh, people might want to do it to the Peach Bowl. Because that's a December 30th game. I'm not sure people know that. They haven't really looked. Some people might have. Yeah. Um, you might want to get out there on Christmas Day. Yeah. Down there. Um, so, yeah, let's get to that. You I think you have a Peach Bowl, David. Go for it. Yeah. I, I know that both the Peach Bowl, I've got some bowl friends. I talked to some people. I tried to tell some people, Bob. That I, I know that the, the Fiesta Bowl is just like always, man. The Fiesta Bowl and the Peach Bowl really want Penn State. Uh, I think if thing, the more things go as, as chalk, yeah, the more things go as expected, the, the more likelihood that Penn State's going to either Phoenix or Atlanta. And Atlanta definitely looks like the most likely because Atlanta's never had them. Um, that's one place they've never gone. Um, I don't know how you feel about Atlanta. I kind of feel like it's the uh, St. Louis of the South. I'm not a huge fan, but I do know people there who are telling me, no, you haven't seen the great parts of Atlanta. And I'm like, okay, um, it's, it's not my favorite. You know, when you think of holiday experiences, you don't think of Atlanta, do you? I, I, I know. You do not. Actually, uh, our, our, our former editor, Nick Horvath, <laughs> sent me to, uh, it was the, it was the uh, 1999 season, the 2000 Super Bowl. It was the Rams and the uh, Titans. The, You're kidding me. You went yeah, to that I, game? I was, at, I was at that game in Atlanta. I had no idea. Yeah, I was in Atlanta. Great finish. Uh, we win. Hey, Bob. We win. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> dick, dick for me that was a dick, dick for me uh that was a that was a nice one i got i was in a i was in a champs before the game a couple days before the game and i got his <laughs> autograph on a napkin so i was dick. pretty i was pretty excited about that the nicest guy in the world he lives like 10 minutes from me here in chester county yeah okay all right but um yeah so i i've been there i mean i think there's no great place to go in late december unless you're going to no. go outside the country so no. we'll see I, I well, you know, everyone likes Phoenix because it's warm. Yeah, and people would prefer that. I would prefer Dallas because my sister lives there, but but it's also because it's fun. But I, I just feel like if things go chalk, especially that Florida State Louisville game, that is kind of a linchpin game. If Florida State wins that, which is no tap in for certain. Yeah, um, have you gotten a look at Louisville? Uh, did you watch the Louisville Kentucky game? I don't I, think I you did not get a it. chance to. Yeah. I did yeah. not. I know that. I know that Pat Narduzzi beat Louisville. That's that's what I know, Dave. <laughs> what are they? Three and nine. Yeah, three and that's nine. Good. Yeah, he beat them. You know, they know they can't get anything better than Pat, so they're just going to keep him, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just. It's not like Tom Allen. How about Tom Allen getting bought out at twenty point eight million dollars by Indiana? What yeah. about that? My God! Maybe they're getting some sugar daddies. I had no idea they had any football sugar daddies, but apparently someone cared. Um, so, Dave, even if they go, even if Penn State goes to Atlanta, like I mean, it'd be, <laughs> I mean, Tulane, Missouri, like, and Tulane. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I think Missouri is more palatable than Tulane. 
Missouri's a pretty good team. I don't think so. No? I don't think so at all. Did you watch Tulane last year against USC in their bowl? Yeah, but anything with USC and defense doesn't count. <laughs> doesn't count. That's Tulane? Tulane is a well-coached team that kind of reminds you of Memphis in the Cotton Bowl, and everyone was down in the mouth about Memphis in the Cotton Bowl. You remember how much fun that was? Yeah, Penn State had 600 yards in that game. I know, but Kenny Gainwell and and the other kid who who were both pros now put on a show, and they put up 39 points. I would much rather see Tulane than Missouri myself. I mean, Eli Drinkwitz has done a really good job at Missouri, but that is not a very interesting team. And – Given Penn State's performance and the style of team they are, I don't see them stretching out against Missouri. I think they need a team that pushes them the way Memphis pushed Penn State in 2019 in the Cotton Bowl. I mean, that made for a better game. So I'm actually hoping for Tulane, unlike you. I am not hoping for Tulane, but we'll see. Let's see. Let's see how it plays out. Plus, they, you know, plus, there's going to be some. There's going to be. They have the greatest. They have the greatest uniforms in college football. I mean, who who else has? light blue and green it's fantastic so i can get out my colored pens <laughs> uh now let's t- let's just look talk a little bit about the weekend games i mean which game of all the games uh which game interests you the most and why i think oklahoma state texas mm-hmm. um has possibilities because oklahoma state lived dangerously did you watch the end of the brigham young game i did not well, they're kind of, they, they won 40 to 34 and it went right down to the end. They won at home. They're on a little bit of a feel good, feel good roll here. Um, it's also interesting because a couple of very uh, uh, well known coordinators in the Big Ten came from that Mike Gundy staff, uh, Mike, Mike Yersich and Jim Knowles. <laughs> hey, who's that first guy? <laughs> He's nobody. He's nothing. He's I nothing. Don't know that yeah. Um, they have rebounded very nicely, and they're in a, on an uptick where a lot of people early this season didn't feel about them. You know, bowl season, it's all about, and, and postseason of any kind, it's all about who wants to play. Uh, I, I don't think Texas has looked very good. I think that game has possibilities. Um, mm-hmm. Everyone else is looking at Louisville, Florida State, and I get that because Florida State hasn't looked very good. I just don't think Louisville's in a particularly good place to win that they know where they're going regardless they're going to the orange bowl no matter what Mm -hmm. and it's it's a bigger game for for florida state so people are looking at that as a possible upset i just think florida state's going to muck through and they're going to make the uh, final four and i i don't i don't think they belong there um somebody's going to get screwed out of oregon and washington and that is the must-see game as far as fun and high level competition dan lanning if they can keep him at oregon that is going to be a power program in the future. I don't know that they can keep him. He's a Georgia guy. Um, I think he's he's going to have so much money thrown at him from the Southeast Con- Southeastern Conference. I just wonder if Oregon, even Oregon, even Phil Knight, who's like 86 years older, whoever their, their money guys turn out to be in the future, if they can hold him. Uh, because I really like Oregon. I think Oregon could win the whole damn thing. I think they're going to beat Washington. I don't trust Michael Penix in a big game. I know you have feelings about Michael Penix. Um, what do you think of that game? Oh, that's- I, don't like, I, 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 you know, when a quarterback passes the age of 29, I just, you know, him and <laughs> Nick, I mean, I feel like they have the answers to the test, Dave. I just don't know what to make of their performances in college football. Like, yeah, but but you're not a big Michael Penix fan. That's are what you? I'm saying. Yeah, he's also what is he? 28, 27, yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. He's been I, around for a while. I just feel like that's cheating. You you remember Penn State kind of knocking him out of uh, Indiana too. I mean that was oh uh, that 24 nothing game. Brandon Smith hit him so hard. He never. I don't think he played again that season. That I was thought, his last. That was his last game in Indiana. I yeah. thought he broke multiple bones in his upper body, and I thought that's it. Too bad. Good for just, him, though. But it's just a different kind of football, Dave. It really is. Watching them play, I don't. I, I mean, I don't know how to quite describe it, but uh, I do think Oregon's legit, and I do think Oregon yeah. is gonna is gonna emerge from that game. I, I like them quite a bit. I do too, and uh, that's a play-in game essentially. Oregon, either Oregon or Washington, whoever wins it is in. Whoever yeah. loses is out. Um, Who do you think are the four best teams? Come on. Who do you think they are? Right now. Well, let me preface that with I don't like this thing about how these 13 people 
some of whom know about college football and some of whom don't. You, yeah. you just know, like, uh -huh. why are they there? It's a prestige hire. Uh -huh. Are deciding this based on that Reese Davis question. Who are the best? Where's we're supposed to pick the best teams? I, I don't think so. Pick on what has happened because you don't have the station to pick who's the best team. I don't believe in this just because everyone thinks essentially the SEC is the best conference in college football, which they've always been. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. also are supposed to pick the best team this year. Um, the question is going to be if Alabama plays their butts off and they've been playing better, their quarterback's been playing better, and they managed to beat Georgia by three points, do you put them both in? Right. I think, I think they will. I think they will. And then that's going to nudge somebody out. And Who, that's who's the most likely. That, oh, is it Texas? That, that sucks. Texas uh, is never, Texas isn't in. They're not going to get it. Texas won Alabama. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. Well, they're not going to get in. If Alabama beats Georgia, yeah. Texas beat them and they'll be both one loss teams. There's no way Texas is getting in. There's, mm -hmm. and, and that sucks. It, it does. Who's the fourth? So Oregon, Michigan, Alabama, Georgia could be a possibility. Yeah, I, 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 there's no way Michigan's out. It's, 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 did you see that? Did you it's going to be, it's gonna be, Florida, it's gonna be Florida State. That's who it's going to be because no one wants them to win anyway. No one wants Florida State in this group, and they'll put two SEC schools in, and that'll be that. It'll be Michigan and the Pac 12 winner, and the, that's going to be the tournament. Which Dude, I saw it, wouldn't, it wouldn't kill me to have that happen. I don't know about you, because Florida State, an undefeated Florida State not in the tournament yeah. would be kind of funny. Dave, I just wanted to let you know that I saw on a betting site for the Big Ten championship game uh, that the first half total points scored for Iowa, it's, they set it at half a point. So you can bet whether they're going to get shut out in the first half or they're going to score, and it's pretty similar in terms of the weight. Wait a minute. The first half total is 0.5 points? Just for Iowa. Just yeah, score. yeah. Yeah, so that, if you think they're going to get shut out in the first half. So if I get a one-point safety, I'm home? Yes, you do. <laughs> you do. If I get a one-point well, safety the other way. Well. If I get a one-point safety the other way, which is, you know, 95 yards, and, and then the guy fumbles in the end zone, which has never happened. So, okay. After yeah. watching the early part of Nebraska, Nebraska, Iowa, I think I, I think I might bet on the shutout. I really did do. Did you watch that? Yeah, it was on early. It was on. It was on at noon. It was available. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish yeah. I didn't. I wish I didn't. Do you realize how much bad Big Ten football I've watched this year? I mean, do you realize it because I've had to, so you don't have to? Big for the, for you've the been dropping that a while. You've been dropping that one on for the on, for the well, power pole. Yeah, but I I'm finally it. I'm finally finished. I yeah. I can't tell you how many bad Nebraska games I have watched where they just piss games away because they yeah. they fumble it away. They, Thirty, what do you say? Thirty one possession losses in the last five years. Yeah, but not only that, this year they led the the country in giveaways, just <laughs> just pissing away games. And they lost their last four. They were bowl eligible a month ago. And then they lost four one score games in a row to finish five and seven. <laughs> the people are starting to think Matt Rule. Maryland, uh, Michigan State, Wisconsin, and these Iowa. flubs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Dave, you, should write a, you should write a book about the Big Ten West. Honest to God, you, you would have a lot of fun doing it, and people would really get into just how bad it was. Well, there's no more. There is no more Big Ten West. It, it, they should have had like a party at the end of the at the end of that game. Well, right. I guess Iowa is going to be the party. Um, do you see any scenario where Iowa has a chance against Michigan? There's always a chance, Bob. It, it, weird things could happen. They just. They they don't take any chances at all on offense, and if they get behind by seven or more points against a good team, they can't win. So that's kind of that's kind of the bind that they're in. How do you get a lead? You literally have to have a, a lead handed to you, and it still not might not be enough. And they're just they're just I don't I mean they do have some good players, but that offense is just oh it's kind of like it's kind of like Penn State against Ohio State and, and Michigan, isn't it? that they never took any chances and they haven't taken any chances, even though they've got a strong arm quarterback in Deacon Hill, 
who you could probably kind of compare to Drew Aller in that, that <laughs> he's he's not nearly as accurate as Drew Aller, but he has a cannon arm. He has a strong arm. He the Iowa always has good tight ends, but they never take the chance necessary to to give themselves a lead, give, give themselves a chance to win the game. So I agree with you. It's it's hard hard to picture a scenario where Iowa hangs in that game. And you would think with a defense like they have, they would have a chance, but they never do. Phil Parker should leave. Phil Parker should take a huge check and go to USC where he is needed desperately. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's, to- uh, yeah, it's not great, Dave. It's all, hey, guys, so just so you know, we also are aware that it's Heisman weekend and the Heisman will go out on Monday. We have a vote, but we're probably going to steer clear of talking about that just because we can't give out our we can't give out our selections until after it's announced. So we're just going to probably keep a close eye. I think we both have a good idea who we like, but we're just going to let 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 it play out, right? Yeah. Well, so, so you brought it up. <laughs> so you brought it up, so I can't say anything. Right, so why'd you bring it up? So I can't say anything. No, I brought it up. So they were like, "Why aren't they going to talk about the Heisman?" <laughs> Do that again. No. Yeah, do that voice. Do you have a friend who talks like that? No, it's, it's a little mid-state man mixed in with a little, I don't know. I went to school at Scranton for four years. Hey, why aren't they going to talk about the husband? <laughs> Penn State. They didn't talk about the husband at all. <laughs> That's good. I like that. You should do that voice more often. <laughs> so we're, State- just gonna, we're just going to wait it out. We're going to play the waiting game on that one. We have to because it's a stipulation of the Heisman, Heisman Committee. That, and I'm 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 actually giving my Heisman committee chairmanship to Bob next year, and it's a stipulation that you do not let people know. And there's podcast guys and hot take guys everywhere who have a vote who who violate that rule, and you yeah. shouldn't violate the rule. If you agree, if you agree to get a vote, then you shouldn't violate the rule. I don't care who you are. So yeah. I'm not a scalding hot take guy. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do it. Yeah, there's there's just like a there's I think there's like a six factor multi factor application thing that you have to go through to get the Heisman vote. Now it's you're gonna it's, it's very <laughs> thorough. It's rigorous vetting, and I like it. Well, you know the Russians could could raid uh, Deloitte and and <laughs> rig it so that somebody uh, gets the vote so that so that uh, uh, who, who could who would the Russians want to get the Heisman if they could? That's the question. <laughs> I think probably Deacon Hill. They could they could really screw with the uh, that that would be Merca. Yeah. Dave, Alabama, Georgia. You just, you said that Alabama could win. Do you see them win? No. Um I think Georgia I think the Alabama quarterback is gonna mess up Do you. I mean, at, at some point. I, I would well I know what I what I would say though is I would not read into uh, the Alabama Auburn game that's a totally different animal and I don't think h- how the, if you think they didn't play that great I just think they got like the a plus 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 game from Auburn and I think that I think Alabama was they were fortunate to survive it but that's a different that's a whole different world I think this is a different game and I think Alabama will be ready did you hear did you hear the Alabama quarterback wants the Heisman give it to me <laughs> did you see that after he said after he threw the miracle touchdown pass, yeah, yeah, you know, he said, "Give me that, give me that MF and Heisman. I want something like that after the celebration." Yeah, yeah. So, are you got Oregon? You got Georgia? I think you're going to still say Texas beats Oklahoma State, but it's going to be a sweat. Is that right? Yeah, but it's they're they're out of it. Um, uh, no, I think Oklahoma State could beat them. Okay, um, it's just it, it it has possible ramifications to who Penn State plays. That's all. Yeah. The Green um, Bay. I think they'll try to put Texas out into the Fiesta Bowl against the um, uh, Pac-12, the, the loser of that game. That's probably the Fiesta Bowl. More than likely, Penn State in the uh, Peach Bowl against either Tulane or Missouri. And mm-hmm. we could celebrate the 1970 Orange Bowl against Missouri. We'll be, have a lot of – you know anything about that game, Bob? Penn State, Missouri. 15 14 game with like that John Wiggins played for. No, that John Wiggins. No, that was the year before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 
It's a, a little recognized. I think Don Crickey probably did. Now, it was Jim Simpson doing that Orange Bowl. He did a lot of those games in the early yeah. 70s. Jim Simpson. Very serious about it, too. Very serious. Jim with, Simpson? Yeah, with Kyle Rote Jr. Is, was well, those, one. Were, those were – Jim Simpson was a real professional announcer. Yes, that's right. He had a big game. And Don Crickey was kind of edgy. He would do – he was kind of counterculture. He was the – he was for that era. He was kind of looked at as you know everything was so conservative back then. You had Ray Scott as the most conservative guy who never did anything out of the ordinary. Don Crickey would say a few things that people would go, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't like that very much. I don't, I don't, I don't think he should, should say it. But it's 1970, you know. He was actually in a movie. Don Crickey was in a movie starring, starring Charlton Heston. Oh yeah. Isn't, as an old New Orleans Saints quarterback called Number One, and really Don bad Crickey. movie, really, <laughs> bad. really, really, like really bad. bad. In fact, if you ever see it, get a chance to see it, you got to watch it simply for the the bad comedy. Isn't value. it amazing how Charlton Heston always stays in Charles Charlton Heston like character? No matter if he's you know on the Planet of the Apes, he's the quarterback for the Saints, he's Moses or whatever. Like he always <laughs> has that same shtick. Like he has no range, is what I'm trying to say. Plus, that's the forerunner. This this movie is the forerunner of any given Sunday. It's the exact <laughs> same plot: the young quarterback coming in to replace the old man. And I'm sure at some point in the movie, when he's threatened by the young quarterback, he he goes, "Damn you!" <laughs> All right, we're losing our audience. What else? Any 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 thoughts on Penn State, Michigan State? I know you watched a lot of Ohio State, Michigan, but did you any thoughts on what Penn State? I did? Thought, I thought Michigan State would show up a little more, yeah. didn't oh, you? That was pretty. That was pretty bad, didn't you? I mean, they just kind of kind of didn't show I would up. Say the minute the minute it started to go wrong, they 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 kind of checked out. Down. Yeah, they checked out. I I, I was back to that quarterback. He got. He got really battered. Well, he's, in, he's in the portal. Did you hear? I know, they, but I, I just think there. that they didn't really put him in a position to no. like, not get beat up. And he's like, you know what? I'm out. I'll see. You. And and to me, I didn't think Jonathan Smith. I had the list of the five guys they were considering, yeah, um, which included Mike Elko from down at Duke, but he wasn't taking that job. <laughs> he's he's he got announced at A and M, did he not? Right, he did. Yeah, um, he was getting a lot more money and a better job than that. Uh, Michigan State hired Jonathan Smith after that game, and I think it's a very interesting hire in that he would have been the guy I wanted. I think he's a terrific coach, but do you believe in fit? Because I do. Because this kid, this guy has never – when when Penn State was about to go to the Rose Bowl in 94, I remember Jonathan Smith quarterbacking Oregon State. I mean, mm -hmm. he's an Oregon State guy. He's a Western guy. He's never lived or coached outside the West his entire career. And now you're parachuting him into Lansing. Uh, now, I know it's a different era where the, the NIL money talks about who you yeah. get. And either you have it or you don't. Michigan State has the wherewithal. Oregon State is lost without a league. They're probably going to be in the Mountain West. I mean, I understand that. He's getting twice as much money as he would have gotten or almost. I think he was making four and a half, and now he's going to make 7.2. I get all that. Yeah. But once you got a few million, do you need another three to go through that hellscape? I, I don't know because I don't think Michigan State's a, a particularly good job. And the, the main thing is I think fit is important. So what does this hire remind you of? It reminds Mike you. Riley in a that's right. That's right. I know you Mike, were teasing me the whole time. I was ready to blurt it out when you started. Yes, yes. It's Mike yeah. Riley at Nebraska, which never was going to work. A great coach at Oregon State. A great coach his entire life until then, but always was a Western guy. Um, Rich Rodriguez at Michigan. It was <laughs> never going to work. It, it's culturally just not a fit. He's a West Virginia hillbilly, a terrific <laughs> coach. <laughs> Do you remember his wife on the field with Paterno? I did. I don't want to say anything. You can say it. I'm not going to say it. Go ahead. Tammy Faye Baker. Hey! I said it. Um, uh, can you imagine her trying to meet? Who brings their wife onto the field to meet Joe Paterno? That was Rich Rodriguez. <laughs> but, but he was an innovator. I mean, Rich Rodriguez was an innovator in the spread option. He and Kevin Wilson really, really put that whole offense together, a, ter a terrific coach. 
uh, Urban Meyer did not innovate this, the spread option. He fed off of those two guys. But you put him in a spot like Michigan, he didn't fit there. He never fit there. He should have gone into the ACC or the SEC or someplace like that. And it, he was pr pretty good fit at Arizona. What I'm saying is I just think, I, I, I wonder if Jonathan can, Smith can yeah. make that work. Michigan State is kind of a tire fire right now. As I, as I ranked all the, the performances of all the, the staffs, I mean, they hired a guy one year out of Colorado and gave him a boatload of money, and you see what happened. I mean, I think you still have to have some integrity in the hire. I really like Jonathan Smith as a coach. I hope he can make Michigan State work, but that is a grease fire right now. Dave, real quick before we go, where is Urban Meyer going to coach now that he can't coach at Michigan State? I hope never anywhere. Do you, uh, but do you think he can sit it out? I, I, he wouldn't go back to Florida, would he? <laughs> no. I, um, after I saw that special on Netflix, I don't think he's going back to Florida. No. Well, um, hey, Bobby Petrino went back to Arkansas. Right. <laughs> Anything's possible. He can get I, a job. He I always, I always yeah. thought Meyer would. Uh, his wife Shelly doesn't want to go up in the north. That's why this thing with him going to people at Michigan State thought they could get Urban Meyer. That was a joke. It's a joke, and it was never going to happen. She's going to go someplace sunny. I always had him for uh, Arizona State or someplace like that. Some some place where there's not too much pressure and not too many, not too much of a moral compass where they, they, they just, they want a guy who can win. I think he's going to end up in the big 12 eventually some, some place like that, but I don't yeah. know where. I think just because he's urban Meyer now, there's always going to be pressure no matter where he goes. It's going to be, if he goes to a place like that, it'll be like, why could he, why did he, why did he take that? I just think he's, he's kind of chasing, you know, a version of his old self and I just don't think he's got the I don't think he's got what it takes like what he did at Florida and what he did at Ohio State what he did at Ohio State was pretty impressive turning that thing around right after 2011 that was pretty quick turnaround that's hard to do and it takes a lot of energy I, I just don't know that he can do it Dave well what he did was based on coercing kids in college who had no options to fight him, who had no power. Right. And he made them do exactly what he wanted to do. And that was exposed when he went to Jacksonville with grown men. And they <laughs> said, hey, F you, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to tell me what to do, you jerk. And, and now he, he would be going back into a world where suddenly players have this power. Yeah. NIL money is power. I mean, it is. To, to Leo Tungavaloa, you saw that he was offered a million to go someplace else this year. Five, yeah. And he's not even a very good quarterback. He's he's leading the Big Ten now career wise in passing yardage. <laughs> Did you see that? He passed yes. he passed another great Big Ten quarterback, Curtis Painter. Man, he is <laughs> which, he is which shows you all you need to know about that statistic. It's like great between the twenties, those guys. Great between the Timmy Chang, yeah. It's like, like system quarterbacks who throw it all over the lot and throw awful passes, but hey, they got the point is that players have power now, and I don't think Urban Meyer can go back into this world where pl players have some power because he's an autocrat and he's going to turn the screws on them and stick it to them, and they're just going to leave. And yeah. I love it. I love it. People don't like that. I love it. I think it's great that that these kids can just tell these guys to screw off because <laughs> They, they, they based their whole careers on having that power over them. And now they don't. So I wouldn't hire him regardless. Really? I wouldn't hire him regardless of that. He's a bad guy. I would just wouldn't hire him because I don't think it would work. I like it. Dave, enjoy, enjoy championship Saturday. What's, uh, what's the game you want to watch the most? Oregon, Washington. Uh, yes, I wish it wasn't on Friday night, but I will. I will. I got the Cowboys on Thursday, I think, against Seattle. I want to watch Oregon for sure because our our Johnny McGonigal thinks if they get in the in the tournament, they're going to win it all. I does he did he say that? Because yeah. I think so too. Yeah, I, I I think Dan Lanning doesn't belong out there, man. 
Uh, he belongs back in the SEC, and I think it's kind of a, an off year for the SEC, both for Georgia and Alabama. I think that team can beat either one, and Bo Nix has motivation to beat those guys. That's that's the thing. Watch we, out. We got a chance to see him at Beaver Stadium in 2013. He's a different guy. He's in a 2013, different guy. 2013, he was pretty good, Dave. He was pretty good. He's <laughs> I see what you did there. He's a different guy now. I mean, he's a different quarterback. He's, he's got a married. He's got five kids. He's got a great, there's a grandkid on the way. He finally <laughs> figured it out. Congratulations, Bo. That's, but what happened to Brian Harson? Speaking of, um, <laughs> he's got two wives and eight kids. No, I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got to get off this. Podcast. <laughs> we are getting in trouble, more trouble by the second. All right. That's it guys. We'll be back next week. 